Good afternoon, everyone. And now we are live in Autodesk Community Philippines YouTube channel and Facebook page for introduction to plumbing system in Revit 2021. We are about to begin in a few minutes. And if you know someone that will benefit in this live stream, please do invite them to join us. Thank you. So before we formally begin, let me remind you all to register for you to receive an official certificate of course completion or event participation. And also, I'd like to invite everyone in meetup.com slash Autodesk Community Philippines for you to get update for our future events and inviting you to like, follow, and join CAD Community Asia and also our parent group, which is Autodesk Community Philippines and also our Autodesk Revit user group Philippines. And I want to greet Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineering, BISCAS, Mechaniweb, Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineering, PUP Student Unit, BPSU Society of Mechanical Engineering Student, CAD Community Asia, CEAT College Student Government, CPSU Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineering, and CSU Careers ICS. So now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me introduce you to our guest lecturer today's event. So he is a BIM or CAD technician in the AEC industry for the past 10 years and the owner of the Learn with Rich YouTube channel. He is also a licensed mechanical engineer and he has been presenting and training thousands of AEC professionals over his career at various conferences and training sessions. So may I present to you our guest lecturer, Mr. Richard Bronto Garcia. Sir, sir, good evening, Bo. Now the floor is yours. Thank you, Bo. Hello. Sound check. How's the audio? Good evening. Clear, sir. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you for the yeah, yeah. Thank you yeah. for the introduction. So I'm not gonna make it that long. So I really want to finish all the exercises that that I have prepared for this one and just a bit of a background so currently i'm not in uh i'm not in philippines so i'm in new zealand right now and it's already 10 p.m here so hopefully yeah we'll be able to finish all the exercises okay so does anyone here that is non-filipino speaking uh individual So I far, think. wala naman po, sir, I think. All right. Now, I think there is uh, Pradeep. So so from the, from that name, I think he's, he's a non-Filipino. But anyway, um, uh, let me just quickly share my screen. Yeah. Okay, so Praveen is also a non-Filipino speaker. 
Okay, so let me just show the script. So, share my screen. All right. So we'll be talking about the introduction to plumbing system for Revit 2021. So I'm really sorry about the the version because that is the version the only version that I have. I already updated that to 2021. So so you need to have a Revit 2021 version for you to be able to follow the exercise. Yeah. So otherwise you will not be able to open it. Okay. So hopefully that is all good to you guys. So I think Mam Ivy already shared the, the files to you. So just in case you want to follow the exercise or you want to do a replay, I believe they're going to save the, the video in this, uh, in this YouTube channel so that you'll be able to follow the exercise with the, with the, with the data files. Okay, so for the first topic that we're gonna talk about is the user interface of the Revit 2021. Because I think, I believe some of you haven't uh, used the Revit yet. Am I correct? Does any one of you here first timer for for Revit? Okay, I mean, uh, you haven't used yet the Revit in your project or in your school. Okay, so one we have here, so from Precious. Yep, thanks. So we are going to talk about the user interface. So we are not going to spend a lot of time for the user interface, but at least you'll be able to have an idea on the on the user interface. Okay, so same with Kurt. Okay, so he's a first timer as well. Okay, so the first uh, window that you'll be able to see when you Good open it. Good evening, everyone. And now we are live in Autodesk Community Philippines YouTube channel and Facebook okay. page. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. So sorry about that background. Okay. So this uh, window that we are seeing right now, this is the recent files window. So this is the window where you are able to see the most recently opened project in Revit. So as you can see, we have here the, the recent files window with the models. So we have the models here. And then we also have here the, the families. Okay, so families is like blocks in, in AutoCAD. So if you remember, if you're using AutoCAD, so they have a elements there, they call it blocks. So for me, the counterpart of that in Revit is the family. So this is an intelligent block that we are inserting inside the, the project. Okay, so this is our recent files window. And what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna open a sample project here. So if you wanna follow, you can click the open here on the left side. And if ever you don't have this window, what you can do is you can click that icon at the upper left corner. You can click that one. So if you click that, you'll be able to click here the file. You click the file and then you'll be able to see there open. So if you want to have the same screen as mine, so you can click that window there. So the home button, just click that one and then you'll be able to see this, okay? And then you'll be able to open the, the project here, okay? Now, if you want to access the sample file that you have in Revit, because when you install the Revit in your machine, so there is these sample files that you can use to work around. So if you want to do that, you can click the home button here and then you can go to file and then you can go to open and then you can see here sample files. Okay, so you can click that one and then after that, the software will go into uh, locate you to the sample folders file. Okay, so these are the sample files that you can use. So let's say, for example, since we are on MEP, I'm just going to open one of the project here. So let's say uh, this one. 
RME Advanced Sample Project. So RME stands for uh, Revit uh, Mechanical. The AC there is architecture. And then the ST here is structure. Okay, just click one and then just select here open. And to those first timers in Revit, okay, so in Revit, you cannot open a file that is higher than the version that you are working on. So let's say, for example, you are using 2020 and then the file is 2021, you will not be able to open the 2021. Okay, so just remember, be careful on saving files. So when you open a file that is lower version, the Revit will uh, convert that file into your current version. So if you are using Revit 2021 and you are opening 2020, Revit will convert that 2020 to 2021 if you are going to save the file. Okay, so that's why it's uh, better to use save as. So in case you encounter that, so just save as the file so that you will not be able to override the old file. Okay, so is that clear? Can all of you follow? Is my audio clear? Let me see some chat there, please. Okay. All good? Okay, good, good, thanks, thanks. Okay, so please bear with me. Please bear my English, all right? So I only have a handful of English language. So hopefully you'll be able to understand me. Okay, good. All right. So this is now the project that we have. So, so as you can see here at the top portion, this is our title bar. So you'll be able to see the name of the project that you are working on. So right now it's uh, RME Advanced Sample uh, Project and then the 3D view. So meaning to say you are opening the 3D view of the project. Okay, and then the name of the view. So you can see from here. And, okay, so to avoid confusion, let me just close some of my windows here because some of you is just a first timer. Okay, All right. So this is our title bar. And then we also have here our ribbon. Okay, so this is our ribbon tabs. Okay, so this is our ribbon tabs. So each ribbon tabs, it contains buttons here that corresponds to the name of your ribbon tab. So like, for example, if you are architecture, if you are on the architecture tab, so if you go there, you'll be able to see here the tools that has something to do with architecture. Like for example, creating walls, creating door, window, etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so if you have time you can just explore all of this okay so same with system so our concern is the system so system that is where you can get the tools that you will be using for your MEPF mechanical electrical plumbing and fire protection okay so these are the tools like for example you want to create a duct for your HVAC so there's the duct tool. If you want to put some mechanical equipment, so it's here as well. If you want to put some plumbing fixture, it's here as well. And if you want to be a fire protection uh, guy, so it's here, the sprinkler. So basically your systems tab is your MEP. Okay, so one thing that you will notice here, I do not have the structure, right? So I seldom use the structure tab, okay? That's why I remove it. So just in case you want to put back the structure, if you are a structure guy, so what you do is you can go to the file tab, uh, file, and then you go to go to options. Just click the options here, and then you go to the graphics. Click the graphics. No, it's user interface. Okay, so you go to user interface, and then you can now see here the tools and analysis. So as you can see here. The structure tab is unchecked, but if you are a structural guy, of course, you need to check that one. So if you check that, and then if you select here, okay, so you will now be able to see it here, right? Okay, so in my case, I seldom use these tools. That's why what I do is I just hide it. So again, just go to the file, go to the options, 
and then go to the user interface and then after that just uncheck the tabs that you're not using that much okay and then just select okay by the way here on the options you can also modify the background so let's say for example you are used to AutoCAD background color so what you do is you can go to the graphics and then you can change the background here okay you can click that and then some of you uh, prefer black background so just select okay and then the first time you open your project af after installing Revit in your machine you will notice the selection here and pre-selection they are both bluish color okay so they are both on the blue color okay so that's why i change it so what i want to do is every time i select the object or the element i want that to be turned to red and then semi-transparent and then the pre-selection will turns to green okay so this is my preferred settings so let me just quickly show you i will select here okay so if i select the object so it will becomes red okay like that so if i'm going to click outside and then hover my pointer to the element you will notice it turns to green okay so that's that's my preference because by default the first time you install revit and run it the color is both blue so when you select the object it's blue so if you highlight the object it's also blue so what i want is i want to have a distinction if the object is selected or if the object is just highlighted so hopefully that one is clear okay and to those who just started using revit or this is the first time okay so if you are going to zoom in zoom out your model so i need to be careful because there are also other first timer in this software so please bear with me to those of you who is already a master in revit so i'm just trying to give some time to those who just started okay so if you're going to zoom in zoom out your model you can use the wheel button of your mouse okay if you're using AutoCAD so it's the same right so zoom ex uh, zoom in and then zoom out so you can scroll your mouse if you if you want to pan your drawing you can hold the middle button of your mouse and then you can move your drawings right so that's how I zoom in, zoom out, and then pan drawing, okay? But in my case, let me just change here the background again. I don't want a black one. So go to the graphics and go to the background. Let me just change it to white. Okay, and then all right. Now let's go back to what we are talking about earlier. So again, this is our ribbon tabs, okay? And then this is our button. Okay, if you're going to hover your pointer to one of the buttons, so let's say, for example, on the dock tool here, so you hover your pointer, do not click, just hover, you can see that there's a shortcut, right? So there's a shortcut, and then the shortcut is DT. All right, so if you are using AutoCAD, so you, when you type a shortcut, you need to press also the Enter button right so in revit so all you have to do is type the shortcut so you don't need to press the enter so like for example if i want to use duct or if i want to use pipe let's say pipe i just need to type pi okay so just type pi and you are now on the pipe tool all right so simple as that and if you want to terminate your command so you just need to escape escape or you can select here modify okay click modify and then your tool now is terminated and again going back to what i'm talking about every time you hover your pointer and then hold your mouse on that particular tool you can also see here some of the information of the tool that you are about to use like for example in my case the air terminal so you will notice every time you hover a pointer, there is this information that pop up, okay? So sometimes there is also video just like that one, just like the fabrication part tool. 
So there is a video. Okay, so sometimes if our computer is, is slow, it's really, sometimes it will hang. Okay, it's really annoying. So there is a way to control this information on your tools every time you hover it. So to do that, to control it, you can go to the file, uh, file again. You go to the options. And then after that, I think it's here, user interface. And then you can see here the tool tip assistance. So as you can see, it's normal. So if you click the drop down arrow, you can put none. Okay, or you can put uh, minimal. Okay, you see if I select here none, and then I select here okay, if I hover my pointer, there is no information, right? So, so it's up to you. Again, this is uh, for user preference. So it's up to you. But in my case, I'm not that good in Revit. So I just changed the tooltip assistance to normal. Okay, just like that. Okay, so that's how you control it. Okay, so let's go back. So this is our ribbon tab. So these are the tools button. And then you can also see here some of the expanded uh, button, just like in my device. So if I click that one, so as you can see, I can expand that. So there's this drop down arrow, right? So you can click that. And then there are also some panels here. You, this portion here, you call this ribbon panel, right? So like when I say, okay, let's go to the plumbing and piping panel. That means it's here. So this is the plumbing and piping panel. So let's say, for example, oh, let's go to the electrical panel. So meaning to say, I want to go to this area here on my electrical panel. So this is called panel. And some of the ribbon panels, so there is an arrow pointing to the lower right corner. Okay, so this is what you call dialogue launcher. Okay, so dialogue launcher. So if you click that, it will open up a dialog. So that's why it's dialog launcher. Okay. And then you'll be able to see here again some useful settings that you can use when you set your project. Okay. So we call this dialog launcher. So in our case, for the mechanical settings, that's there's also a shortcut for that. You can type MS. Okay, you can type MS as uh, mechanical settings. Now, let's say, for example, uh, Richard, is there, a sh is there a way to customize the shortcuts? There's a way, okay? The shortcut for the keyboard shortcut is KS. Okay, so you can type KS. KS, you type it, and then you will now see here the keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so let's say, for example, I want to create a shortcut for uh, extend. Okay, so I need to search it first. So I can type here, extend. We have extend. Okay, so we have a stand, extend here. So let's say, um, trim extend single element. So there is no shortcut here. So I'm going to select this one. And then I'm going to type the shortcut here. So that's how you create or customize your shortcut. Okay, so you can type here. Let's say I want uh, uh, T, E, and then select apply or assign here. Just click that one. There you go. So you now have the shortcut. Okay, and if your company has a standard, so you need to ask your BIM manager if they have a keyboard shortcut. Why? Because what you can do is you can use those shortcuts and import in your project. So that when some of your team members will be using your computer, at least you have your own, or I, at least you have a uniform set of shortcuts. Okay, because usually as part of the, uh, part of the job of BIM, uh, manager, at least they need to create a standard shortcut that the whole company will be using. Okay, so if they do have this one, so you can import that to your project. So you can select that one and then you'll be able to use those shortcuts. Or if you are the B manager, after you set up all the shortcuts that you want, then you can use export here 
and you'll be able to share this to your colleague. Well, anyway, so that's uh, so much for the keyboard shortcut. Okay, so what else? So we have the, what's this? Uh, ribbon tab. So we have the button here. And then we have the dialog launcher. And then some of the ribbon panel here. Let me go to annotate. Annotate tab. So some of the ribbon panel, you can also expand it. So you see there's an arrow beside the dimension here. So if you click that, you'll be able to expand that one. And then there's an also, uh, there's also a tool here to pin your expanded panel so that it will not hide. Because usually, if you're going to unpin that one, after you select the tool here on your expanded panel, you go back to your project, it will auto-hide, right? You see it auto-hides. So like, for example, the tag here, if I click that one, it will expand. If I go back again to my project, it will hide. Okay, so that's auto-hide. So if you want to pin that one, so you can just select the pin here. Okay. All right, so you still with me, guys? Can you follow? Am I too fast or too slow? Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Thanks. Thanks, thanks. All right. And by the way, um, if you will notice on the upper part of my uh, user interface uh, interface here, uh, usually you have this uh, quick access toolbar. Okay, so I have the quick access toolbar here below. That's my preference. But usually this quick access toolbar is located here at the top left. Okay, so I just put it here below. But if you want to put that back, so you can click the arrow there, and then you can select uh, Show a Bob Ribbon. Just click that one, and then you will now be able to place it. This is the original location of your Quick Access Toolbar. But in my part, I always put it below. Show below the ribbon. Okay, so that's my Quick Access Toolbar. So the Quick Access Toolbar, this is where you can select most of the tools that is commonly used in your project, like uh, creating a new one, opening a new one, saving, synchronizing, uh, undo, redo, plot, etc., etc. And just in case some of the tools, uh, you want to add some of the tools on your quick access toolbar, just like in my case, I have added here the plumbing fixture, the pipe fitting, and also the pipe. So if you want, to add, so what you can do is, let's say, for example, as a ME guy, so you want to add your doc because you always use that to your project. So what you can do is go to the Systems tab, right-click the doc, right-click that one, and then you can select here, Add to Quick Access Toolbar. So if you click that one, so it will now be added here, okay? So that even if you are on the Annotate tab, and then suddenly you want to use the doc tool. So no need for you to go back again to systems and then select the doc. Why? Because it's already here on my quick access toolbar. Okay, so hopefully this one is clear. Okay, so that's your quick access toolbar. And just below your quick access toolbar, you can see here the options bar. So what is this options bar? Why is it blank? Because options bar is uh, element or command sensitive. It will only populate if you have selected a certain command or selected an element. Okay, so let's say, for example, I will select my pipe tool. If I click that one, so you will notice my options bar here will now populate with options regarding to the tool that I have selected. So if I'm going to terminate the tool, so it will become blank again, okay, right? So I click the pipe, and you will also notice that there is this greenish tab that will appear. So this is a contextual tab. Just like your options bar, 
contextual tab only appears if you create or select a tool or select an element because if you terminate your command, it will disappear again. Right, so that's your options bar. And then we also have here our project browser. Project browser, this is just like the table of contents of your project. So this is where you can see all the floor plans, the 3D views, what else? The legends, the schedules, the reports, the sheets in your project, the families, the groups, or the links that is currently linked in your project. So this is very important. And if ever you accidentally close your project browser, in Revit 2021, all you have to do is to right click, blank space, look for the browsers, and then look for the project browser. Okay, so your project browser will also tell you what is the current view that is open because it's highlighted here. Okay, it's highlighted. So if you right click your project browser, you will have these three options. So you have search, because if you are working a very big project, so there are times that you really need to search it because there's a lot of views here. There's a lot of sheets, legends, and families in the project browser. So if you know a keyword on the view that you are searching, you just need to type it here. Okay, just type and then the project browser will show it to you, okay? And then another option that we have here is expand all. So if you select expand all, it will expand all the views in your project browser. And like what I have said earlier, you will know the current view that is open on your uh, view window if you see that it's highlighted here. So that's the view that is open. So aside from looking at the title bar, so you see the title bar there, it tells you what is the view that is currently open. So it's the same with the project browser, okay? So you can right click again and then you can select collapse all. Okay, so that's your project browser. And then you also have properties. I close the properties. So if you wanna open the properties, you can right click and then you can select your properties, click that one. And there you go, so there's my properties. So currently my properties and project browser is combined to one window. So let me just drag the properties here outside. So let's drag that one. And then I'm going to dock that to my right side. There you go, there's my properties. Now for the properties here, if you do not select any elements or any project, the properties will show you the property of the view that is currently open, okay? So right now, it tells us that this is a 3D view. And then that is the WSP 2-3 system view. So that is the one that is currently open. And it's telling us that it's also in 1 is to 100 scale. So basically, remember this, if you do not select any objects or any elements in your view window, the properties here is view properties. So remember that view properties, if you do not select any objects in your view window. Now, if you're going to select an element, let's say for example, this air terminal here, I click that one using left click, okay? So to those starters, Use your left click to select the object. And then you will notice here the properties now tells me what is that particular element. So this now is not a view properties anymore, okay? So this is instance properties. So remember that. So just in case you are going to take the examination, that is one of the terminology, instance property. So this is the property of the instance that you have selected. So now it tells me, ah, okay, so that is level two. So that's the height. So there's the arrow, and then there's the total pressure. There's the flow of that particular air terminal. So you call this instance properties. Okay, so just a quick recap. So we have the 
modify to deselect. So this is what? View properties because I didn't select any object. If I click one, so that's now your instance properties. If I click this one here, edit type, you click that one. So this is now your type properties. So basically we have what? So we have view properties, we have instance properties, and then we have type properties. So what's the difference between the instance properties and type properties? Instance properties, which is this one, any changes that you made here, it will only affect the selected element or elements because I can use a window selection like that, right? To select multiple objects. And then I can modify the instance property. So any changes that you made on the instance properties, it will only affect the selected element. But if you use the type properties, I click one, I go to the type properties. So this one, any changes that you made here, it will change the type. My 600 by 600 face, 300 by 300 connection. So if I have this type inserted in my project 100 times, so all of that elements will change. So if I change the width, let's say to 300, for example, okay? If I have 100 inserted in this project in, with this type, so all of them will change the width to 300. So that's why it's not a good idea just by just simply going to your type properties and then straight away change the property here. Don't do that if you're not sure of what you are doing. So let's say, oh, I want to have a 900 one. So don't change that to 900 straight away. So what you do is you duplicate it, duplicate, and then put whatever name that you want and then select OK. And then that's the time you can now change that to 900. By doing that, you will only modifying this particular family here. And you are creating another type of family, okay? So hope that one is clear. So let me just cancel this one. So that's our properties, what else? Okay, so just below here on our view window, so we have the view control bar. Okay, so view control bar, it controls the view. So aside from the properties, you can use your view control bar to control the settings of the view in your uh, current view. So it only affects your current view, okay? So remember, any changes that you made here, it will only affect your current view, okay? So let's say, for example, I go to the um, piping, floor plan, level one piping, so if I change the scale of this, so let's say I change that to one is to 50, like that, it only applies to this view. So if I go to the other view, like level two, it's still one is to 100. But for my level one piping plan, as you can see, it's one is to 50. Okay, so that's how the view control bar works. So if you change this, it only affects your current view, right? So in our future uh, discussion, so we are going to use some of the tools that we have here on our view control bar. Okay, so just letting you know that this is our view control bar. And what else? So we also have this part here. Okay, so this is very useful, your status bar. Why? Because if you are going to select an object, like for example, this one, I'm gonna click this fitting here, this elbow, if I click that one, okay, or aside from looking at the properties here, you will notice, oh, sorry, just hover, sorry, just hover a pointer and then your status bar will tell you what is that particular family. So aside from the tooltip that is coming, you see there's the tooltip, Okay, so if the tooltip disappears, just look at the status bar. So you can see here at the status bar, just hover your pointer. So the status bar tells you what is that particular element. And if you are going to select a tool, like for example, the pipe, if you click the pipe, 
Okay, this is the status bar will tells you what to do. Okay, as you can see, you read the status bar, it tells me to click to enter pipe start point. So I'm going to click, that will gonna be my start point, right? So that's the start point. And then as you can see, check out again your status bar. You can see it tells us to enter the pipe end point, okay? So if I click that, so as you can see, there's now my endpoint. Okay, so basically that's your status bar. Let me just select this and don't be confused. I'm just going to delete, okay? So I'm going to press delete on my keyboard. Okay, so that's your status bar. And then if you're using a work set, this one. So we use work sets if we want to have our team members to work with, with us. Let's say we have a big project and then you want to divide your project into a dif uh, into different disciplines, say for example, uh, HVAC, uh, fire protection, domestic water, sanitary, and other services. So you can uh, activate your work set and then you can work on that particular one, on one particular project with multiple team members, okay? So you can use the work set. But then again, it's not part of our topic. So we have a separate topic for that. If ever I'll be uh, doing again any any discussion with you guys, okay? What else? Okay, so we, have, we also have design options. And then we also have here the selection tools, okay? Which is pretty useful, okay? So we'll be using this one again if we still have time on our uh, discussion. Okay, so basically this is now, this is the basic uh, user interface of Revit. So just a quick review, this uh, top portion here, this is our title bar. And then this is our info center on the right side. So that's the info center. And then we have the ribbon tabs, Okay, ribbon tabs, and then we also have here our button. And then we have our ribbon panel, and then we have the quick access toolbar, and then we have the options bar, we have the project browser, and then we also have the, of course, the view window or the drawing area, and then we also have here the properties. And then we have the view control bar, the status bar, the work sets, design options, and then our selection uh, selection tools here. Okay, and then you will notice every time I open a view, so like, for example, I open level three piping plan. If I double click that, you will notice here at the top, it shows you all the views that you have open in your project, right? which is useful, okay? So if ever you want to see all the views that you have open, like in my case, so I have four views currently open. So if I want all of these views to be open in my view, what I can do is I can go to the view tab and after that, you can go to the tile views or you can just type WT. This is very useful tools. Just click that one and then it will show you all the views. And right now they are not zoom extents. So what you do is you can right click and then you can select zoom to fit. So it will zoom to fit this view only. Now, if you want all of the views to be zoom to fit all at once, so what you do is you click that navigation bar. By the way, this is navigation bar. And then um, you can select zoom all to fit. Just click that one. And then all your views will gonna be zoom all to fit. There is a shortcut for that. The shortcut for zoom all to fit, uh, take note of this, is ZA, okay? ZA, so that's the shortcut for zoom all to fit, okay? But then again, if you have time, you can just explore your uh, navigation bar 
And if you want to um, maximize one of the views that we have here, so let's say our level three piping plan, what you can do is you can go to the view and then you can click here, tab views, or you can type TWD. And in my case, I already added that to my quick access toolbar. So I can just simply click this icon if I want to maximize one of the views, okay? And by the way, you can also press your wheel button twice if you want to zoom extends your drawing. Just press that two times and then zoom extends, right? Okay, so if you want to tile the views, again, um, what I will do is I'm going to add tile views to my quick access toolbar. And there you go. So I can just simply click that one. And there you go. And then I can use here zoom all to fit. Okay, zoom all to fit. There you go. Now, there are some instances here that you want to close all the views that you do not use. Like, for example, I have three here, right? Level two, uh, water source heat pump, and level one here. So if I want all of these three views closed, I can just select that icon there. Close and active views, right? Okay, very simple. Just click that one and it will now close all the views. Okay, so basically that's the user interface. Oh, do you have any question? before we move on to our next topic. So do you have any question about the user interface, guys? It's really cold here. It's already 10.47 uh, p.m. here in New Zealand. So we are advanced four hours from the Philippines. Okay, so it's almost winter. That's why it's really cold now. Clear. Thanks, sir, Ronald. Yes, sir, Emmanuel, I'm from Learning with Rich. Thank you. Thank you for coming, guys. So, so it's clear, right? But don't worry if ever you, you forget some of the things that I have said, which uh, you, you may forget that. So what you can do is you just press F1. Okay, so you just hover your pointer to one of the tools. So let's say, for example, oh, I don't know anything about the plumbing fixture. So you hover your pointer to the plumbing fixture and then just press F1. Okay, so F1, that is a universal tool for help. Okay, so that's why I, I am not talking a lot when it comes to uh, user interface because you can you can just simply press F1 and then go to the help and then look for the Revit user interface. Okay, so you'll be able to see that, right? Okay, so clear, right? So I think we can now move on to our next uh, topic, which is planning a plumbing system. So hopefully all of you guys will be able to download the exercise files so that after this one, after this one is uploaded to this uh, YouTube channel, Autodesk Commu uh, Community Philippines, you can rewatch the video, you can practice with the files that I use for this, uh, uh, for this video, okay? So let's get started. So what we are going to do now is let's start planning a plumbing system. Again, we are not going to do all the tools regarding the planning in plumbing system, just the basic tools, okay? Right, just the basic tools. So let me just close this one. So I don't need this. I'm not gonna save this one, so no. By the way, uh, guys, um, when you do your modeling, there are some instances that there is this dialog box that popping up in your window that tells you you haven't synchronized your project or you haven't saved your project. So sometimes in my part, it's really annoying. And right now you are not seeing that dialog box because I turned it off. Okay, but in your case, if ever you are wondering, again, you can go to the file and then you go to the options 
and then you can go to the general. So as you can see here, my save reminder interval is no reminder. Okay? So if you do not want to be reminded and you know for yourself that you always save your file, so you can select no reminders. But if you're just newbie, just select 15 minutes. And every 15 minutes, Autodesk will remind you to save your project. So let's see this one. So let's say 15 minutes, I'll just select OK. And there you go. All right, so let's close this one. Let's close this one. Okay, so let's open up our first exercise. So I open, I go to my training. So these are the files that you will be, uh, you will be downloading. Okay, so it's really Autodesk, Autodesk key type of uh, files. So you have the number one, two, three, up to seven, and then we only have one file for planning zero one. Letter I there stands for Imperial. So the exercise file that we will be using now in this video is Imperial units. Okay, because I don't have the metric units. So sorry about that. Although we are using uh, metric, I don't have the metric exercise file. So even here in New Zealand, we are using metric. Okay, and then it also includes the architectural model. And I know, right? So you are already familiar with this model. So we've been seeing this, in my case, I've been seeing this since 2008 when I started using using Revit. This, this is the model actually that won the competition in Munich, Germany. And this is already a classic uh, exercise file, okay? So let's get started. So if you have any questions in our last topic regarding the user interface, you can shoot up, okay? So let me just open this one. Ah, no, planning. Okay, so I select that, and then I select your open. Okay. And then one good thing about Revit, high, the higher version in Revit, I think it started 2018. Okay, so please correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong. So you can, see, you can now see here the preview and then the version, right? So before, in lower version of Revit, like 2010, 15, 14, you don't know what is the version of the Revit that you are opening. So now you'll be able to know. So there's the version. Well, anyway, so let me click that and then open. Cool. Oh, sorry. Okay, so can you see now my screen, guys? So I just opened a new uh, project here for planning. Okay, can you see clearly my model now? So currently, my view is on level one plumbing plan design. Okay, because planning is very critical to a successful design. So we are going to learn how to prepare our design in our uh, plumbing system. Okay, so Revit MEP or Revit 2021, it provides uh, common families for plumbing components that we place in our plumbing plan. So in this exercise, what I'm going to show you is to create a new type of uh, pipe. Okay, because when you start your project, actually, this is the job for the B manager, but just in case you want to be a B manager. So this is one of the few things that you need to do when setting up the template of your project. You need to learn how to create a pipe type. Okay, so there's a lot of pipe type in MEP world. So this is just one of that. Okay, so what you can do is on the project browser, Project Browser, you move the slider down, and then you look for the pipes, okay? So as you can see here, I only have one pipe type. So I only have PBC uh, Sanitary for my 
uh, let's say I'm going to work on the sanitary modeling for the piping. So I only have one PVC here. So what I want to do, I want to create another one. So let's say, for example, in sanitary, so you also need to have a vent pipe. Okay, so you need to have a vent pipe. So what I'm going to do is to create a new pipe type, what you do is just simply right click. Okay, just simply right click and then select duplicate. Okay, so just click that one. And then there's now your duplicate here. Okay. And then, of course, we need to rename this. Just right click and then select rename. Okay. So just click that one and then you can now change to vent. Okay. So vent, enter. Okay. Right. So all of you can follow. Okay, so it's not that difficult, right? So you just need to right click and then duplicate. And then after that, what you do is you need to change some uh, some of the properties of the pipe type that you just created. Just double click this one, double click the pipe type that you have created, and then you will now see here your uh, type properties. Okay, so from the type properties, what you can do is you can go to the routing preferences, Click edit. Okay, so just click edit. And then you can now modify here. Okay, in electrical uh, engineering, if you are putting some uh, cable tray, so this is one, uh, one checking that you need to do because sometimes when you create your cable tray, there's no fittings. And same with the pipe and same with the duct. So you need to check the routing preferences because sometimes all of this is none. Okay, so that's why you are wondering, why is it I cannot bend my pipe? I can't create an elbow for my for my uh, duct or my cable tray or my uh, pipe because you didn't specify the routing preference of your pipes or ducts or cable tray. So this is how you do it. So you need to go to the routing preferences. So let me just show it again. Just go to edit. Okay, so just click edit and then you just specify here. So since this is for vent, so you can specify here the pipe segment here. Okay, you can select the size, what's the minimum size for the pipe and then the maximum size. And then for the elbow, you can change that. You can click that one. And then you just need to select there what is the type of the elbow that you want for the family that you created or the pipe type that you have created. So in my case, I'll just use this one. Okay. Domestic uh, waste vent pipe DWV. And then for the preferred junction type, I'll just use T because there is also other option here, which is tap. But in our case, I'll just use T. And then you can specify again the minimum size and then the max size junction. Let's change that one. So currently it's sanitary. So I'll just change that to vent, uh, this one. T vent. And then for the cross, uh, okay. What do we got here? So we have a vent again. So just change that one. Uh, do we have other options here? Okay, so I'll just use this. Okay, so basically I'm just showing you the routing preferences. So that just in case you create your own pipe, whether it be a fire pipe, a domestic, cold water, domestic hot water, or vent or sanitary, this is where you go, okay? Now, if you want to create a new type for the, or you want to add size for your pipe, you can actually go to the segments and sizes. Just click that one. And there you go. So you can look for the material that you are using. So I'm using plastic schedule 40. So what I can do is I can click the segment here on the segments and sizes, just click that one, click the drop down arrow and then look for the material that you are using, click that one 
And there's now your plastic schedule 40. And then if you want to add a new size for that, then there you go. So there's now the new size uh, option for that. Okay, so let's say, for example, let's create one half. Do we have one half here? So we don't have. So I'll select new size for the plastic schedule 40. So I click that one. So I'll put here one half inch. And then you can put the inside diameter. Okay, so let's say five eight of an inch and then 27. I'm just following the, the, the notes that I have here. So that's for my outside and then enter. So basically that's now how you add a new size. Okay, so I think you get the idea, right? So you just add it here. And then use in size list, just check that one and then use in sizing. Okay, so that's how you create and then that's how you set up your routing preferences. Okay, so in setting up your uh, plumbing or your hydraulics, because here in New Zealand, we call it hydraulics. Hydraulics is the sanitary and then the domestic uh, piping. So hydraulics, under the hydraulics, so we have the sanitary that includes the sanitary piping, vent, uh, storm water. So it also includes the domestic cold water, domestic hot water. So basically we call it hydraulics. Okay, so that's the hydraulics uh, pipe type. And another thing that you can consider here after you create a pipe type is how to load your piping components. So let's say you have a family. Let's say your B manager already created a family. So you may want to load that particular family in the project that you're working on. So if you want to do that, okay, so this is part of planning. So you can go to insert. And then after that, you can select load family. Okay, so just click that one and then just select the family that you want to load. So let's say this one. So this is the family that I want to load in my project. So I'll just select that one and then just select open. Okay, so the reason why we are loading that so that when we use or create a pipe, and then suddenly we want to put a trap on that. So it's already loaded, so I just need to select it. Okay, so that's how you load. So this is part of the uh, B Manager thing that you need to do. So in one project, when you set up a project, so you need to create the pipe type that your team members will be working on. And then what are the families that they need in your project? You don't need to load all the families that you have created. So you only need to load the family that you are, that you are going to use. Okay. So another thing that you can consider aside from creating pipe types, aside from loading family, is by checking out your mechanical settings. So if you go to the systems tab, you can see here your mechanical settings dialog launcher or the shortcut is MS. All right, you click that one and then you will now be going back to the mechanical settings dialog box. Okay, so let's say, for example, for my pipe settings here. So these are some of the settings. Again, if you have time, go to your pipe settings, press F1. So you will now see all the meaning of this. So in my case, so let's say, for example, I want to change the pipe connector tolerance. So I don't want a five degree tolerance. So I'm going to make that 10 degrees. Okay. So if Revit knows that the current unit that you are using is degrees, so no need for you to type the symbol degrees here. Anyway, uh, how to type the degree symbol? I don't know. Is it percent percent D? I forgot. Okay, so since the settings currently here is in degrees, so no need for you to type the degree symbol. You just type the value and then just click on the next one. And Revit will now read it as 10 degrees. So that's how you change it from here. So you can change that one, the tolerance. So instead of 5 degrees only, you can, you can deviate up to 10 degrees. Okay? So aside from that, you can also consider going to the conversion. 
Okay, so we are working on the sanitary uh, planning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the system here because we have several systems, right? So we have hydronic, we have the sanitary domestic, we have the fire protection. So we are working on the sanitary. So I'm going to select the sanitary here. And then after that, you need to specify what is the sanitary pipe that you want when you create your layout. So I'm going to change the pipe type here. So what I want is PBC. So click the drop down arrow and then look for the pipe type that you have created, right? That's the one. And then you can specify here the offset or the middle elevation of your sanitary pipe if you create it automatically. So by default, the offset is nine foot. So let's say what I want is, I want uh, minus four feet. So if I generate the piping for the sanitary, automatically the sanitary will become uh, minus four feet. Okay, so it will be created below, minus four feet. Okay, that's for our main pipe. And then for the branch pipe, you can also specify it. Okay, so same settings as my main. So I'll just change this as uh, PBC, and then I'll change this to uh, minus four as well, minus four feet. Okay, that's it. Okay, so these are just some of the things that you might consider when setting up your project. Actually, there's a lot of things that you need to consider, but our time is not enough. Okay, but at least you know the basic, right? You create the pipe type, and then you load the family that you need, and then you go to the uh, systems, go to the mechanical settings, or you can type MS, and then from here, you can all specify these things. Again, like what I have said, go here, click one option, press F1, okay, so that you'll be able to have an idea what is these things that you are clicking, okay? We don't have time for that, and... Actually, you also need to create a view template for that. But, okay, so we are going to talk about that next time. Okay, so that's it for your planning. And you can also create a system here. So we have a lot of system. Actually, these are just some of the systems that we may want to, in, uh, to be included to our project. But just in case you want to create another type of uh, system here. So again, you can duplicate it, okay? So same procedure, just like what we did on our pipe types. So I'm not going to put so much uh, information to you, uh, to you all, guys. So, but I think you already know and get the idea of what I'm talking about. So hopefully this one is clear. Okay. Hindi uh, nakikita. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, you can't see my properties. Okay, okay. Hmm. All right. So let me open my mechanical settings again. Can you see my mechanical settings now? So I open my mechanical settings, the pop-up dialog. Can you see it, guys? Hmm. Oh, yeah. It's not showing. So how... Mm, all right. Ah. Mm. All right. So let me just check this out. Mm, let me share my screen. Let me. Okay. So just give me a moment, guys. So I'm just checking my options. Check. Okay, so how about this? Can you see, guys, my uh, pop-up window, the mechanical settings, the dialogue launcher? 
So I think you can now see my dialog launcher. Right, good. Sorry about that. I didn't notice. And I seldom look at our chat. Okay. So anyway, what I'm talking about, guys, is that, so like what I have said, so one thing that you might consider when setting up your project as a BIM coordinator or BIM manager is by creating your uh, pipe types, right? So I already show you how to duplicate your pipe types. So, and if you're going to double click that, Okay, so you double click. You can now see the type properties. Oh, Joe. Okay, can you hear me, guys? Okay, so here's the type properties. So you go to the edit here, this one, edit. And then you can now see here your uh, routing preferences settings. So like what I have said, so you need to check on the fittings that you have on your uh, pipe type. So in my case, my PBC bent. So if ever you wanna change your settings, you can click the type and then you can click the drop down arrow. Okay, so that's how you change it. And like what I have said earlier, so there are instances wherein if you are going to create the elbow on your piping or, or your duct or your cable tray, sometimes it's not working. Okay, so probably it's because of the routing preferences. So make sure so they are all uh, loaded. The families are all loaded so that there's nothing wrong when you create an elbow or you just suddenly turn up up direction when creating your dock when you are on the horizontal direction. Okay, so you check your routing preferences. So that's your routing preferences and uh, your mechanical settings. You go to the mechanical settings, click that one, and there you go. So this is what I'm talking about so on the mechanical settings. Since we are working on the sanitary, so you change the settings of your sanitary. So you click that, and then you look for sanitary. So you click sanitary, and then after that, you can now see here the pipe type that you are going to use, which is the PBC sanitary, and then the elevation. That's for the main pipe. And then we also have the settings for the branch pipe. All right. And then just select your OK. All right. And like what I've said, so we are not going to talk too much information so that at least you can retain some of the information that I am uh, talking about, right? Okay, so let's move on to our next exercise. So by the way, do you have questions on our uh, planning a plumbing system? So I know it's only a few settings, but at least hopefully you'll be able to get some of this uh, pin in your head. So did you understand, guys? So sorry about the window. I, uh, I didn't notice it. Okay, I didn't notice that you are not seeing my pop-up window. Okay, shoot. Okay, so what's the question then, so? so? Let me just... Do you create your own pipe? The pipes is already here. So it's it's a system system family. Your pipe is system family. So you do not create your own pipe. So the pipe is already here. Now, if you are asking if you want to create a new pipe type, so that is what we did just now. Okay, but for the pipe itself, the pipe tool, so it's already there. But I think you're asking on the pipe type. So that's how you create your pipe type. 
So in our case, we started using the sanitary. We duplicate the PBC sanitary. And then we change the name of that one to PBC vent. So you double click the PBC vent to open up your type properties. And then you go to the routing preferences. So here on the routing preferences, this is where you specify what type of pipe that you are going to use. Is it plastic? If it is not plastic, you can click the drop down arrow and then you can select other type of pipe here. Like for example, you are creating other type of piping. So you can use carbon steel, you can use copper. So these are the types. So you can go to the segments and sizes to open up the mechanical settings. And then here are the segments. These are the types of the pipe that you can create. Okay, so you can specify the sizes and then you can specify here the type of fittings of the pipe that you are creating. Okay, so for the, hopefully that one answers your question, uh, Sir Dan. So, okay, so that's how you create your uh, pipe type. Okay. Right, good. So are you, uh, from Melvin, are you using the monthly base subscription of Revit 2021 or the full license? Uh, for the subscription, I actually don't know because I'm using the software in our company. So basically, if, if you already have the job and you are working in a construction company, they do have a subscription. So we subscribe. I think this one is an annual or one year subscription. So yearly. So I'm not the one who's paying this one. So I'm just using the 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 Revit in our company. Okay. Because I, I think this one is really expensive. Can you can you still uh download it? I think you can still download 30 days trial, but on my case, um we are on subscription basis. I think this one is annually. Okay, so that's it. I think we can move on now. Thanks for a couple of questions. Okay, now, uh, so that's for your first exercise. It's not difficult, but hopefully you get, you get the gist of it, okay? Right, but anyway, if you have any questions, you can always uh, put it on the, put it on the, comment and then we will be looking at that because we have a time limit for this uh, video okay so how to add cold and water pipings in fixture family no wala pang pipings so we will be doing that later on so it's part of the exercise uh sir alvin okay so we will be doing that so we are on that path uh, Sir Albin John. Okay. Right. So let's move on. Okay. So for the next exercise, so what we are going to do is um, we are going to start learning to play sanitary plumbing fixtures. So let me just quickly open that exercise. So let me just close this one. Okay. So the structure of our uh, data files is by number. Okay. So we are now done with the planning zero one. So we will now be doing planning uh plumbing design zero one and then after that zero two zero three and so on and so forth so we'll be doing the number one here so let's open up that and then in this exercise we are going to add sanitary plumbing fixtures okay in this project so we are going to work on this area here okay so this area now, so one tip, if your project is very big and sometimes it confuses you where is where are you going to start or some part of the building is really big that you want to compress it or to concentrate only on one area like this area here. So you can use your view control bar. So what you can do, you turn on the crop region, this one. You turn on the crop region, you click that. 
And then you can now see here your uh, crop region. So you can use this to crop your view. You click that and then you can crop the view if it is too big for you. That's it. That's it. All right? To tidy up. Okay. There you go. Okay, so this is the only area that we are going to work on. Of course, we are not going to put uh, our design in the whole building. Okay, so this is just a basic one. So if you already graduated and you find a job, you will get used to it, okay, in creating uh, big projects. All right, so what we are going to do here is how to add uh, plumbing fixtures. So in this exercise, we are going to add two toilets, one urinal, and a floor drain. Okay, and then later on, we are going to add uh, three uh, wash and basin or sinks in our model. Okay, so this area here. So let's add our plumbing fixtures. Okay, so to add our plumbing fixtures, as you can see, that plumbing fixtures icon is already on my quick access toolbar. But then again, if you don't have your quick access toolbar with plumbing fixture, so you can go to the systems and then you can go to your plumbing fixture here. Or you can type the shortcut PX, all right? So I'm going to select the plumbing fixture and then from the type properties, you can click the drop down arrow and then you can now select here the families that you needed. Okay. So again, if you are the B manager, so make sure all of these families is already loaded in the project of your team member so that no need for them to reload it. Okay. Right. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to load my uh, water closet. Okay, so I'm going to load my water closet here. So let's say I'm going to use uh, this one, water closet, flash bulb, wall mounted. So you click that. And then when you place your family, so you will notice my pointer right now says cannot, right? Because currently it's uh, set to vertical face so the placement is placed on vertical face so make sure if that is the settings make sure you move your pointer to a wall so that it will appear because you are uh, placing that to a vertical face right so our wall is vertical face so your family will only appear if it is a vertical face if this is the settings that you have selected okay so that's that's why just be careful on selecting the placement uh, option here. So we will be using the vertical face and then we are going to place it. We already have some guidelines here, reference line in the exercise so that you will not get confused. So I'm going to pick one here. That's it. And then after that, you can also pick another one. So let's say I'm just going to line up here to that line. So you click and then after that, again, you can use the modify to terminate it. Just click that one. And as you can see here, this water closet is not aligned here. So what you can do, you can go to the modify tab. And then you can use here align tool. Okay, click the align tool. And then select your reference line here. You click that. And then you click the... Uh, center line of your water closet. Just click that. And there you go. And then select modify. If you want to see this in the 3D view, what you can do is, okay, you can click and hold control to select the other family. And then you click this icon here, selection box. Very useful. Okay, you click that selection box. You can type BX. And then it will show you that particular family in 3D view. If you want to orbit your model, you hold the shift and then you hold the middle button of your mouse to orbit your model like that. Okay. Then click outside. 
So if you're going to select that section box, that boundary, and then you go back again to your level one, you can see that it's still highlighted, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust that section box for me to be able to see all the views that I wanted, okay? Right? And then after that, let me just click outside. So I'm going back again to my plumbing fixture, and then I'm going to select here my wall-mounted urinal. So where's my urinal? Uh, yeah, this one. Okay, so I want a 3 4 inch flash bulb. Click that one, and there you go. All right. And then we're going to place that just beside our water closet. So let's just align that to the reference line. There you go. Okay. And then I'm not going to terminate my plumbing fixture tool. So I'm just going to click the type selector here. I needed a sink. Or oh, let's say a drain. I want a drain for this one. Oh, so there's the drain. So I just want two inches here, five by five strainer, two inches drain. So just click that one. And then, all right, so for our drain, so we are not going to place that on vertical face. So make sure you change the placement to place on face, okay? You click that, and then you can now see your drain there. So we are going to place that, let's say, uh, somewhere here. There you go. And then after that, you click Modify to terminate the tool. Just click that one. There you go. And then if we are going back again to the 3D view, so this is now how it looks like. Now, if you want to highlight as well the architectural model that is linked to your project, so what you do is you go to the discipline here. Make sure you don't select any elements. So you go to the view properties. You change the discipline. Change that one to coordination. You click that one. And there you go. Okay, so you will now be able to see the architectural model as well so that you can see if there are some clashes or uh, errors in placing your families, right? Okay. So, of course, obviously in this model, it's not yet complete the architectural. There's no partition yet. But at least we can already place our uh, plumbing fixtures because in real world uh, construction, so uh, basically, the architectural is still being designed while you are also working on the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and also the structural. So sometimes the model really is not yet complete. But at least, just like what you are seeing here in this exercise, you can put some reference lines to place your family. And okay, another thing that I want you to check out is this system browser okay so that is another type of window just like the project browser and then the properties system browser is very important in mep okay so where's this simple uh where is this uh system browser just right click look for the browsers and then you can now see the system browser click that one and then there you go there's, there's now your system browser so the system browser it will tells you what are the elements that is already assigned to a system? And what is the elements that is not yet assigned to the system? Okay, specifically, what are the connectors of the families that is already assigned to a system or not yet assigned to a system? So as you can see here on my systems, you look for the systems. So I have here seven unassigned items. So if you are going to expand that, it's all on our piping. Domestic, cold water, sanitary. All right, so what are this? So these are the connectors on the families that we have placed. Okay, so I'm going to the 3D view here. I'll change the coordination. Instead of coordination, I'll change that to plumbing, discipline. Okay, so if I'm going to click uh, this, this one, okay? So you will notice it highlights on my system browser, right? It highlights under the domestic cold water and then under the sanitary. Why? Because this family contains 
connectors for sanitary. You see that symbol? That is for sanitary. You see the symbol? That is for domestic cold water. That's why this family is included under the domestic cold water because it has a connector, this water closet. And then this water closet also has a sanitary connector. That's why don't be confused. Hey, why is it that water closet is included to my domestic cold water and sanitary? Yes, because they uh, that one contains the connector for sanitary. The other one is for domestic. That's why it's here. Okay? Same with this guy here. If you click this, it's only here on the sanitary, the floor drain. Why? Because there is no domestic water here. It's just sanitary. Okay? You don't put any domestic cold water or domestic hot water connector here. You only put in this family a sanitary connector. That's why it's just here. Okay? Okay, so same with this one. You click that one. So this urinal has a domestic cold water and it also has a sanitary connector. Right? There's the connector for cold water and then there's the connector for sanitary. So that's why if you're going to count, so how many connectors? So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's why you see here seven. Is that clear? Is that clear? Before I move on. Okay, so I don't want you guys to be confused. Why is it seven? I only have four here. It's because of the connectors. So hopefully, guys, you can follow. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, so thanks. Thanks, Ronald. Thanks, Melvin. Okay, good, good, good. So, all right. So that's why system browser is very important to your, to your project. So when you create a project, so make sure you check out your system browser and make sure you tell your BIM manager that you put a connector to your family. Anyway, uh, most of the MEP families it contains already connectors because that is where you generate your pipe, generate your dock, generate your, your 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 cable tray, your conduit. Okay, so thanks. Okay, so thanks, Chris. Right, so let's move on. So that's how you put uh, plumbing fixtures in your project. So hopefully this one is clear. So we are now done on our Design 01 exercise. Okay, so let's move on to the exercise file. So I'm glad you can follow. So let me just close this one without saving. So let me open the next two. Okay, so this time around in this exercise, so we are going to create a sanitary plumbing system. Again, it's the same exercise. Don't be confused. It's the same model, same model. I'm just following the Autodesk way because I worked before at Autodesk for almost a year. If it wasn't because of New Zealand, of course, I'm not going to resign at Autodesk. I love life in Autodesk. It's a really big company, but yeah, it's in Singapore and I want to go to New Zealand. So that's why I choose New Zealand. Okay, anyway, uh, in this exercise, we are going to create a sanitary plumbing system. Okay, so let's create a sanitary. I'm going to show you how to create. And then I'm also going to show you how to do it manually. So this is automatic. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to do it manually. Okay, hopefully that one is cool. Okay, so let's start. So what you do is you select all the families or any other elements. Just use a window selection like that. You pick from left to right. And then after that, you use filter. Okay, you see that filter, you click that, and then the filter will show you what are the elements that you have selected. So you will you, you can see here that, oh, I selected 10 lines and I selected four plumbing fixtures, right? So I only want to use the plumbing fixtures. So I'm going to uncheck the lines. Uncheck that one. And then after that, select OK. And then you are now sure that you selected the four plumbing fixtures where you are going to create your plumbing system. 
Okay? So now, after you select the plumbing fixtures, let's create a sanitary system. So you select the family and then check out your contextual tab. Remember, you call this context, uh, contextual tab. Okay, so you call this contextual tab and then you can see here create systems. You see the create system, you click that piping there. So you click that one and then you can now see here the system type, sanitary. If you are going to deselect your, your, what's this? Your drain, okay? You can see from the options here, drop down option, you can also see uh, domestic cold water. Okay, let's try. So I'm gonna cancel this one. Cancel, hold shift to deselect, hold shift and click the, the drain. And then let's check out again the piping. You click that one. You see, you click the drop down arrow. You can also see the domestic cold water. Why? Because these three plumbing fixtures, it contains domestic cold water connector. Okay, let me cancel this one. Hold control and then click the drain. The drain doesn't have a connect, uh, cold water connector. That's why there's no cold water here. So hopefully that's one in, uh, that one is clear. Okay, so let's call this one uh, 107, sanitary 107. Why? Because this is space is room 107. That's why I just want to call it sanitary 107. Okay, and then just select your okay. You check out your systems here, okay? This is cool. So you select this and then you select okay. And then check out your systems, system browser. There you go. So you now have here one piping system assign okay you expand that one you can now see the sanitary there expand that you can now see the sanitary system that we created so what are the system that is already part of the piping system so we now have sanitary 107 and then these plumbing fixtures right okay so we now have these four uh plumbing fixtures and and then again, you will notice if I click the water closet, it highlights here, but it also highlights to the unassigned. Why? Because this water closet, it also contains cold water. So the cold water connector is still here. It's still unassigned. So we only assign the connector sanitary for this water closet, but the domestic cold water connector is not yet assigned, which is what we're going to do later on, okay? So don't be confused, don't be confused. So the floor drain, it's only here. It will not assign there, no more. Why? Because the floor, uh, floor, uh, floor drain, it only contains a sanitary connector, okay? Not on the unassigned there. So this is very useful because as a BIM manager, you can uh, check out what are the plumbing fixtures that is already part of the system and what are the others that is not yet assigned to a system? It's really important to uh, check this one out for the health of your Revit model, right? So that's how you create a system. So it's not that uh, difficult. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to create a physical connection, okay? Just like the question earlier. So how are we going to generate the pipe from the connectors, okay? So let's create automatically then later on i'm going to show you to do it manually all right so that we know how to do it automatically and manually so let me just modify to deselect any objects or terminate any command so what i'm going to do is uh, to generate the piping just select any one of the element that is part of your sanitary 107 system so let's say this one i can also select this one or this one, or this one, right? Any one of these four. So you click that, and then after that, we are going to select here, generate layout. Okay, so this is our guy, generate layout. So you click this one, there you go. So there's the layout, right? But before that, so we need to place the source of the, Layout, okay, so there is this place base. So it places a base in the system to establish a source 
or an outlet for flow or the stack, okay? So we need to create the stack, location of the stack. So I'm going to select place base. Okay, so it will create a vertical pipe for the system to connect into and establishes a source or an outlet for the flow. So I'm going to put here the stack or the base. So I'm going to place it there. Okay. And then we are going to specify the diameter of that pipe. So for the diameter, I'll just make it uh, 4 inches. And then for the offset, I'm just going to make that minus 4. Okay, so minus 4 feet. So the diameter of the stack or the source is 4 inches. And then for the offset is 4 feet. Okay. There you go. And then after that, the next thing that we're going to specify after we place the stack or the base, you can do it manually your your stack here by just creating a vertical pipe so it's just the same okay so after you specify the location of your base the next thing that we're going to do is let us check out the solution so you go to the solution and then let's specify here the settings okay so i click the settings and then for the main pipe for the pipe type, so we will be using the PVC sanitary. But for the offset here, I want to generate the piping to become minus one foot. So it will offset minus one foot below for the main pipe. Okay, and same for the branch. So I select the branch here. Again, sanitary pipe. Let's change this to minus one foot. Okay, so hopefully you can follow. So our main pipe there, you see the color blue line there? That color blue line, that is your main pipe. The color green line there, that is your branch pipe. Okay, so take note of that. Remember, blue main, green branch. Okay, you specify here on the pipe conversion settings. And then let's select here, okay. And then the next thing that we are going to do is, uh, of course, you need to specify the slope. So remember, we are working on sanitary. You need to put a slope on that. Okay, do not create a straight pipe for a sanitary layout, okay? For a sanitary pipe, there should be a slope, okay? So I'll just use one-eighth of an inch uh, per 12 inches. So that's the slope. And then for the solution here, so I will be using, uh, I'll be using, let's say, uh, perimeter. Let's see, perimeter, oh, no, not perimeter, intersection. Okay, so I'll use the intersection. And then uh, solution number two. And then let's modify this one here. So right after you specify the layout, you can still modify the pipe here. Okay, you can select the solution. And then after that, you can uh, go to edit layout. Click that one. And then you notice your pointer here. You hover that to the pipe like that. You pick the pipe and then you can move that. Okay, you can drag that pipe just like that. And then you can also check that in the 3D view. So let's check that one out in the 3D view. So this is now how it looks like. Okay, so you can edit the layout. So you can click that. And then you can uh, still modify that one. So let's say I'll just put it here straight. Same with this one. Just like that. Okay, remember the blue is the main pipe, the green is the branch. Okay. So after you customize the suggested layouts, the next thing that you're going to do now is to uh, finish the layout. So you finish the layout, you click finish layout, and let's see. And there you go. And then you will notice if you click the pipe, 
So there's a slope, right? So it's correct. Because remember, this is sanitary, so you need to have a slope, okay? So for the domestic cold water or hot water, so it doesn't matter, so don't put a slope, okay? But if it is a domestic uh, sanitary, so make sure there's a slope. So there's a slope there, right? Okay, and then there's our source, okay? All right, so that's it for this one, okay? Okay. So just in case you have a wrong direction for the fittings, like for example, this one, although this is already the correct direction. So let's say the direction suddenly when you create the layout going to that direction, you can always click that flip option. You can click that to flip your pipe, okay? But like what I've said earlier, it's already correct. So that's why no need for you to flip the direction of the fittings, okay? But I'm going to undo this one. And there you go. So that's the correct direction. See, right? It's going there. So there's the slope going to that direction, going to this direction here. Okay? Hopefully, this one is clear. So do you have any questions? Okay, so we are now done on the design 02. So I'm going to move that to 03. Okay, so while I'm opening the model, again, it's the same model, so don't be confused. It's the same model, so I'm just uh, following the flow of the exercise file, but I'm still opening the same model. Okay, so I'm not going to save this one. So shoot up some questions So while opening. So 03, open. Whew. It's almost 12 o'clock. So there you go. All right, so same model here. Okay, so Mar Joseph, so can Revit auto generate a list of materials based on the model? Yeah, you can do that, okay? So you can create a material takeoff or you can create a schedule. So you can do that in Revit. Oh, yes, Batangas, Batangas. So during the time when I was studying mechanical engineering and preparing for the, for the exam, so those people from Batangas, they are really good during the, during the, uh, board exam. Yes, sir, Dar. <laughs> Patangas is really good. <laughs> During the time when I was still studying back in Adamson University, most of them are from Batangas. And actually, our Dean's Lister number one is from Batangas. Okay, so they are really good when it comes to engineering. Well, anyway, uh, let's move on to our next exercise. Okay, so for this one, so after learning how to place this uh, family fixtures and placing some uh, piping, so the next thing that we are going to do is, let's say, for example, you want to add fixtures to the system. So because as you can see on our system here, so we have the sanitary 107. So let's say we want to add three more fixtures. Okay, so we are going to add sinks. Sink in this uh, room here, in this uh, male 107 uh, room. Okay, so how are we going to do that? So again, first of all, so make sure you have the family loaded in your project. So if you don't have, again, just a review for those who just started using Revit, you can go to the insert tab, and then you can go to the load family. So when you click the load family, so go to the folder where you have saved your family, your, your sink. But again, in this uh, uh, file, our sink is already loaded. So we just need to place it. Okay, so let's place our sink here. So let's do it. So let's go to the systems tab. Let's look for the plumbing fixture, or you can go to your quick access toolbar if you already save your plumbing fixture there. So you click plumbing fixture, and then you go to the type properties, and then let's look for our lavatory. 
Okay. All right. So this one. So I'm going to select. Let's put it here. Again, this is a wall-hosted family. So that's why place on vertical face here is the option that we will be using. So you hover your pointer to the wall, align it to the reference line that we have there. And then again, you will notice your unassigned system here continues to pile up by trees. Why? Because this family that we are placing right now, it contains three connectors. So that's why it now becomes uh, 12 items. Okay, so this uh, lavatory here or this fixture, it contains cold and hot connector and then uh, sanitary. So that's why it's three connectors there. Okay, so by the way, aside from placing it one by one, you can also place one and then you can copy it. Okay, so that's another, uh, another option. Okay, so let us now add this to the system. Okay, I I want to go to the 3D view to see it, how it looks like, okay. Okay, so let's add this to the system. So what you do is you click one of the family that is already part of the system. You can click the drain, the water closet, or the urinal. And then after that, oh, by the way, one uh, pro tip. For you to be able to know if the element is already part of the system or not, you just need to, uh, you just simply select it. You click that, and then you will notice there is no another contextual tab here because if you click a family that is already part of the system, you click that, you have two contextual tab. You have the normal contextual tab, and then you have the piping system tab. So meaning to say, this one is already part of the system, right? But if I'm going to click this freshly inserted family, you will notice I only have here one contextual tab. There is no piping system here. Why? Because this one is not yet assigned to a system. Or another way, of course, you go to the system browser and then you click that. Oh, okay, so that is already part of Sanitary 107. This one is not yet part of the system. But anyway, let's add these three uh, lavatories. So let's click one and then um, go to the piping systems because we are going to add that. Piping systems and then edit system. So you go to edit system to go inside the system and then by default, add to system is already selected. So you just need to select this lavatories to the system. Okay, and then finish editing system. There you go. So if you now click that one and it's now part of the system, so it's now there. Okay, so now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to add this uh, sinks to the pipe network. So we're going to do it manually. So to do that, you see this elbow here? You can upgrade this to T. Just simply click the elbow, and then you can see here the plus icon. Just click that plus icon there, and then it will now become uh, T. Okay, so what you can do is convert that to T. Okay, then after that, the next thing that you can do, it's either you create your floor plan or your piping to your uh, 3D view, you can do that in 3D view, or you can also do that in the plan view. Okay, if you want to do that in the plan view, just go there on the plan view, and then you click that uh, T fittings, and then you right click that uh, uh, node there, you right click, and then you can see here, draw pipe. Okay, so you click draw pipe, and make sure that you are on the correct type, Okay, and then you can now create. So let's say, for example, I'm going to create up to this part here. Okay, so make sure you have a slope. So I'm not going to pick yet. So make sure you have a slope. So it should be slope up because the direction of our water is from top going down here, going to that stack there. 
or to that source. So make sure the slope that you will be adding here is slope up. And we'll be using the same slope here. And there you go. So it's sloping up. And then you click there. Okay, and then select your modify. Okay. So if you want, you can also create another pipe here that is going up. You can do that on the plan view. Of course, you can do that in the 3D view, but if you want to create a pipe here that goes up, what you do is you click, again, the pipe, right-click the node, draw pipe, and you just specify here the elevation. So I click the elevation. So let's say uh, 2 feet 6 inches. Okay, and then apply, apply, there you go, and then modify. So if you check that in the 3D view, or let me tile it, oh, there you go, see? So you now have your pipe there. Okay, and the next thing that we are going to do is we're going to add here a fitting, Y fitting. Again, it's already loaded in this exercise, so don't worry about loading it. Okay, so let's go to, the, uh, to our fitting tool. So let's select pipe fitting, or if you don't have that, place on your quick access toolbar, so that's your fitting. You can also type PF for the pipe fitting. Okay, so you click that one, and then you click the type selector, and then you look for that uh, fitting. Or you can search here. You can type, let's say, Y fitting. There you go. And then just select your OK. Right. And then you just hover your pointer to your pipe. Click that. Don't worry about the location. So you can modify that later on. So you pick first. And then you place it. And then select your modify. There you go. And like what I have said, don't worry about the uh, the position because you can modify your your pitting using this uh, control points or aligning option here. So you can click that to rotate. There you go. And then you can also flip that direction. There you go. Okay. By the way, later on, uh, we are going to add also the vent pipe. Okay, so let's add vent pipe later. Okay, so let us just con uh, continue this one first. So I'm sorry. Uh, uh, sorry for the late reply on the on the top chat because I'm looking right now on our on our video. Sorry about if I cannot read your your comments, guys, so fast. Okay, but anyway, um, after this one, so we are now going to create another pipe, okay? So let's do that on our uh, floor plan here. Or well, let's say, uh, let's use this section because there's a section in this uh, model. So let's double click that section head. So to those of you who just started using Revit, to create a section, you just need to click that icon there. So that's the section tool. So you just need to pick two points. Okay, so let me just click that. Okay, you click just two points. So one, two, that's it. So that's how you create a section. So don't be confused on this section because in this uh, project, the section is already created, okay? So don't be confused. So sorry about that. So it's already there. So let me just delete this one okay so that's how you create the section and then if you're going to open the section so you have several options first you click the section line right click and then uh, go to view so another way to open a section uh, just double click the section head okay and if you if you know the section you know the section, like for example, if I click that one, you check the properties here, it's section 38. You can look for that one at the project browser. You can open the project browser and then look for section 38. 
Okay, so you have several ways to open this section. Okay, just double click this. There you go. So that's now our uh, section view, right? So let's create here. So let's create some pipe here. So you see our Y there. So let's right click. So let's create a pipe here. Okay, so make sure. Okay, so PBC Sanitary. So let's pick here. And then make sure slope up. Okay. Then after that, is it a line? Okay, pick. Okay, and then let's do that also to the other side. So escape your tool, escape twice, then right click again, right click, draw pipe. Okay, click. And then let's click and then modify. There you go. Okay, so hopefully, guys, you can follow. Okay, so again, if you have any questions, you can you can just put it on our comment section below. All right, and then for this one, let me just adjust the center line pipe here. Let me just move that line here there you go okay and then let's put up some stub pipe here let's click that let's click this one that icon and we can type the distance of our pipe here so let's say what's here uh six inches Okay, and then uh, modify. And then we are going to do that as well to the other uh, three sinks. So let's click that icon. So that is another way of creating pipe, by the way. So let me repeat. So you click the sink. So you can right click that node to create pipe or you can select the sink and then you click that icon there. Okay. And then you can type the distance. So let's say six and then inches symbol, enter. Then modify and then same with this. Actually, there is another way to do this is that you can just set up first one of the sync and then after that you copy another two here. So instead of doing like this, okay? But, but since we're already here, let's just continue this. There you go. Okay, so now the next thing that we are going to do after we create these stubs, of course, we need to have a trap here, right? So we need to have a we need to have a P trap. Okay, so to have a P trap, so you just need to load it in your project. But then again, in this exercise, it's already uh, loaded. So I'm going to select here the pipe fitting. So I'm going to select that one. And then after that, you look for the type selector. Let's look for the trap, which is this one. So you click that and then just click the pipe. Okay, don't worry about the direction. We can modify that later on, then modify. Okay, there you go. Then you click that. Let's click that icon, rotate icon. Oops. Click again, there you go. Then this one, this one, this one here. There you go. Okay, and then one last thing, we just need to connect these pipes. So there is another way of creating or connecting your pipe. So aside from doing it, uh, creating pipe like this, doing it manually, draw pipe, and then connecting here. Aside of doing that, so usually during the stage of a development design, okay, so what we do is we just use the connect into, okay? We just use the connect into tool. So you can click that fittings, and then there is this connect into tool. Just click that one, and then you click the pipe. Okay, so that is 
another way of connecting your pipe connect into connect into you click that there you go you click that connect into and then oops so this is the reminder that i'm talking about earlier so from time to time revit will uh tells you to save your project but let me just cancel this one if you want to remove that just like what i have shown you earlier you can go to the file you can go to the options you can go to the save reminder here you can change that okay right okay so there you go now the problem here is if you're going to use the connect into since you did not do that uh technically this is automatic right but since you do it automatically not manually so you will notice your pipe here doesn't have any slope right there's no slope so what you do is um, you click this three horizontal pipes hold control while clicking and then after that you change the slope here click the slope and then make sure the slope that you want to use is already selected or if it is not you click the drop down arrow and then select the slope that you want and then finish that's it okay so there's now the slope there there you go and you will notice little by little for your system browser it's now uh, updated here right so there's your connectors there for the sanitary okay and then you can also specify or modify this one so let's say you have another set of layout of the floor plan just like this one from the level one so let's say you also have uh same setup or layout of the architectural model on the second level so what you can do is you can create another pipe or you can make this t and then create another pipe going up okay you can click that one and then you can create a pipe here you can do it here on the 3d view or of course easier you can do you can do that in the uh plan view or section view sorry so on the section view so better to do that on the section view so you right click that draw a pipe and then you can just do it here so let's see until second level and then modify okay that's it and then if you want to add so of course you want to have also the the vent pipe so you want to add the vent pipe for this one so you can just do it here as well in the section view okay you can add the fitting if you have the right fitting for that so you can click again the fitting icon drop down arrow and then you can let's look for the fitting here is it loaded okay so this one so let me try this one so t reducing vent so what does this one looks like so what does that look like in the 3d view so let's click this nope not this one okay so how about we just create it here manually so let me just connect this first let's click this uh right click you can use create similar to create another pipe like this create similar and then you can type the diameter here so what's the diameter so uh, let's say it's about 65 ish 65 inch oh sorry 65 mm okay that one so that is 2.5 okay so let me just do it here in the section view 
let's create one here there we go and then let's create pipe there there you go so let me just click that let me just put it here okay so you can just uh, put that all the way to the to the roof. Okay, so same with your main pipe here. And then they are going to merge to go to your rooftop. So basically, that's how you add another pipe. So let's say, for example, for your bent. Okay, just make sure your pipe for the main stack. So uh, the standard that we are using is this one is 100 mm. And then for the vent, so we use 65 mm. Okay, so I think this one is just the same. So this one is what? Uh, four inch. Okay, so this one should be 2.5. Something like that, okay? Right, so that will gonna be your uh, vent. So let's check out the 3D view on that one. Oops, this one here. Right, so let me just use window selection. So you window selection and then use uh, selection box. There you go. And then maximize that 3D view and here you go. Okay. Okay, so if you want to create another system, so or let's say you want to remove a family from the system so let's say you want to create a separate system like uh, you want to create a gray water system so let's say you want to uh, separate the connections or the system of these three plumbing fixture that's the time you can now use another option on your uh, system so you can remove a family fixture from the system so just make sure if you are going to remove a family from the system make sure the connections or the pipes are already deleted so this is what will happen so let's say i want to remove this fixture from the system so you click that or any of the family that is already part of the system and then you go to the piping system you edit the system and then you select remove from system now if the family that you're going to remove is not yet uh or the pipes are not yet deleted from the fixture it will not work you see you cannot click you cannot remove because there are still a connection there so for you to be able to use this so make sure they are already deleted from your uh family you delete that one okay and then you click again that go to piping system edit system and then uh, remove from system. Then you can click that to remove that. There you go. So it's now removed from the system and then you can now edit. And then you will now notice it's not part of the system here anymore. So I only now have two lavatory in my Sanitary 107 system. Okay, so that's how you remove. So make sure you delete the connection. So whether it be mechanical equipment or uh, plumbing system or plumbing fixtures you want to remove from the system. Okay, so let me just undo. Okay, so this is now the final model for our sanitary system. And I don't think we still have more time. Um, um, I believe we still have time to continue or we can do this on the next session. I think, sir, we can do this on the next session, Paul. <laughs> yeah. So, because we still yeah, have uh, we still have um, exercise files for the domestic cold water and hot water, so maybe we can we can just continue do that next time. Yeah. Up, up. Yes. Up. Oh, wait. Wait. Okay, so let's say, for example, just like the question of Sir Sir Dar. So you can change the type here. 
So the question is, what if, for example, I'm creating the pipe system using a wrong pipe type? How should I change the pipe type of the system to the correct one? Yeah, so let's say you encounter that one. So this one here, this one should be vent, for example, okay? So what you do is you change the type here on the mechanical. Okay, so what you can do, just let me just delete this connection first. Just make sure you have the type of that particular pipe system. So if you're going to change, so just click that pipe and then you go to the system type here and then you look for the vent. So let's say we have the vent system there or the vent system type. So you select that one so that the type of the pipe is now correct. And then after that, you can now uh, connect it again. So you can use, uh, for this one, you can use trim, trim extend to corner, and then you can now connect that again. Okay. So there should be a standard colors for the for the sanitary, for the vent, for the domestic color, not just like this one, because this is an Autodesk exercise file. I don't think they created the standard color for that. But basically, that's how you change it. So just in case you created the pipe with a wrong system, because when you create the pipe, make sure you are using the correct pipe type, for example, and then make sure you are using the system type, the correct system type. So if you are creating a fire protection, so make sure you are using fire protection. So if you're using a domestic uh, cold water layout, so make sure you change the type, okay? Because there are some settings wherein if your system type is wrong, the fittings that you would like on that particular layout is uh, different from the ones that you would like to create. So that's why it's really important for us, especially on the beginners, to use the correct pipe type before you lay out your uh, piping. Okay, just click the pipe there, so make sure you are using the correct pipe types. And if you do not have the pipe type, so you can just always go to the project browser and then you can uh, create from the families or make sure you ask your B manager. If you are not the manager, so make sure you just inform them that you needed this particular pipe type or you needed this particular uh, piping system. Okay. So hopefully uh, I answer the, the question to some of you uh, guys and help you on your on, and help you on your modeling. And again, from time to time, make sure you change the discipline so that you can see how it works with the other discipline, if it is clashing or not. So you can use the, the section box to check out, to adjust, so just like this one, this one. Oh, this one is clashing. Okay, but then again, you, you also need to know what is the stage of the project. So don't put too much detail if you are just on the develop design. So actually in our company, if it is develop design, we are not connecting too much our pipe to the main pipe. So what we do is we just create the main pipes and then just put there the, the pipes. So we do not just simply connect all of that because usually in the develop design, the, the, the architect still changing or replacing the location of your, your fixtures. They don't want the design, so they keep on changing. Okay, so just remember, you, need, you also need to ask what is the stage of the project. If it is detailed design, so yeah. So make sure it's detailed already. You connect all the fittings because most likely about more than 50%, the design is already complete on the architect's side, okay? So any questions, guys, regarding our topic? So next time, so we are going to continue this one. So we are going to finish the layout for the domestic and cold water layout. Mom, Ivy? 
do they do they do they still have some questions or clarifications? No more. Hello. Oops, sorry. Okay, so there is another question from Sir Dar. So if if you want to change a different material, for example, cast iron, so what you can do, guys, is just like what we did earlier. So for the pipe types, you can go to the uh, PVC vent, for example, or you can create a new one. And then after that, uh, you double-click the pipe type Let's say, I'll just double click the standard here. Go to the standard, double click that, <clears throat> and then go to the routing preferences. And then you can change from here. You can play with the material on the uh, pipe segment, okay? Or you can also go to the segments and sizes to open up the mechanical settings can click that one and then you can now see it here on the pipe settings segments and sizes you can check out on the uh, carbon steel or whatever material that we want to that we want to use in our project so currently this is the only segment that we have so maybe you can create another type here okay Okay, so another one um, from Sir Charles. How to open the Revit file in Revit 2021 version? Official student license. Can't you just open it directly? Because I, I haven't tried using uh, student version before. Usually when I use, when I open a file, I'll just directly open that one. What's the anong, anong problem, sir? What's the problem? Nag error. Hmm. Error. Any particular error, sir? Any particular error na nag appear No error? Okay, so anyway, so there is another question here from Sir Dar. So I want to change the existing PBC pipe layout to cast iron pipe. Can I change the type and update the existing PBC fittings to CI fittings? Hmm. So usually what I do with that is I just uh, select the pipes. So for example, you want to change, for example, um, this one is uh, PBC sanitary. So this is the type that we just created. So what I do is that I will select this type or let's say this is already connected. What I'm gonna do is um, I'll hover my pointer, press tab, so by pressing tab, it will highlight the connection to your pipes. Okay, so you press tabs. So every time you press tab, it highlights uh, different connections. So if you're going to look at the status bar, okay, so you see, uh, every time I hover and press tab, you notice the status bar. It tells you branch in a pipe, in a pipe network, including the branch objects, 
and so or so on and so forth. Okay, so what I do is you hover your pointer, press tab, and then you click. Okay, so this one is too much uh, tabbing. So because it, the options that I'm looking for is not there. Okay, so can I filter this one? Okay, so pipe fittings and pipe type. Okay, so I use the filter. And then after that, you can go to the uh, change type. Okay, so you go to change type, and then after that, okay, so the sanitary type, so I select that one. The change type, and then you can now select from here. So you can change now the type. So let's say uh, standard. So it will now change all the pipe to the standard type. Okay, so just like that. So you hover your pointer, press tab, Okay, so let me just undo because it's already changed. Okay, so hover your pointer, press tab, you click, and then there's an option change type, and then you can now change from here. Thanks, uh, sir, Dar. Space, oh, usually, yes, uh, I just select, okay. <laughs> so when you see the space is not in properly enclosed region, so the problem there is, that's the problem. So the space is not properly enclosed. So that's why when placing a space, when doing the space and zoning planning in your project, so make sure when you place your space, they are completely enclosed. Otherwise, you will see that particular uh, uh, error. So for that case, just, just select OK, just to accept that one, uh, Sir Charlie. Okay, so hopefully uh, this one has been helpful to you guys. I think it's already uh, late there in your place. It's already, what, uh, 12? Uh, 8, 827. So it's already 1227 here. So, Ma'am IB, any, anything else? Thank you, Pooh, sir for your time and for sharing your knowledge i guess wala na pong ibang question sir uh, i think meron pa silang question it's just uh they are they are just being modest about my time my time my time here in new zealand because it's already 12 28 here but 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 just in case guys you still have more questions so you can put it on the comment section or you can just send it to to mom to mom ib okay. Okay. Or you can ask Sir Dari Lumbera because he is he is the 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 admin in the Filipino Beam community Facebook page. You can go to that page as well. So aside from the page of the Autodesk Community Philippines, Ma'am Ivy. If kung may tang papu kayo, pwede po kayo mag-comment below para po masagot na po ni Sir Richard. And you may continue po, sir, if ever po wala na ang tanong. Yeah, so, so next time we are going to continue our discussion about the, the what's this? The cold water. Because we only managed to do the sanitary. So hopefully, guys, this has been helpful to you, especially to those who are just starting to use Revit. So because most... Most of the time, so they are they are my concern. Those who are just starting to use Revit because it's really difficult the first time you use it. But you know, um, there's a lot of ways for you to be able to learn it. You can go to YouTube. You can go to the page, just like Facebook page, just like what I have said earlier. So there's a lot of groups there. Very helpful. Okay. Sir, may another concern though, po si Charles Trinidad po. Okay, so what's that? You're welcome, guys, by the way. Uh, another concern, it says uh, that Revit could not find or read one reference. Is there is there an option there, sir? When, when you see that uh, particular uh, icon or message,
So maybe what happens there is uh, it might be some of the reference of the dimension. So if one of the reference lines or reference planes are deleted, and it's just so happened that one family is hosted on that particular uh, reference line or reference planes or walls before, you'll be able to see that particular uh, icon. So maybe there is just some missing references that happens when you loaded the project. So options are open, manage. Oh, OK. I think it's the link. So the problem there, Sir Charles, is the link. So when you open up the project, there is no, uh, there is no link. So maybe the link uh, model is not uh, located in the link dialog box. So in case you encounter that, sir, if you can still uh, see my screen, so what you do is just load it. Or if you do not need that particular link, just select uh, ignore. You can just ignore that or you can just load it. Okay, you go to the manage links and then maybe if you're opening our exercise file, so what you do is you click from the Revit tab, you click the architectural link model, and then after that, you select reload from. Okay, you select reload from. And then after that, you look for our model, the Arch link model, because that happens also when I open our exercise file. So the Revit cannot uh, find the link. Maybe it's because it's located to different folder. So if that happens, just reload it again, okay? But if you do not uh, need that one, that link, if it is just other project, you can ignore that and then you can continue opening the project. But if you need that, so make sure you go to the reloading. So manage links, Revit tab, you click that missing link and then you select reload from and then you load it. Yes, yes, hindi mabasa yung ano, Revit link niya. Wala siya, hindi siya mabasa. Kaya ganun. You're welcome, sir. Okay, so next time, um, we are going to continue our discussion. So, yep. So that's it for our topic. So to those of you who don't have the exercise files, again, you can just uh, message here on our chat and Mom IB will gladly help you guys. Yeah, that's the link. So thank you guys. And hopefully you learn something in this uh, session. Mom IB? Thank you so much, po, Sir Richard, for your time and for sharing your knowledge about introduction to Revit Plumbing System and Revit 2021, po, sir. Thank you Thank so you, much, po, sir. Thanks, Thank ma'am. See you guys. Thank you, Bye. And to all the participants, once again, please re register for you to get a certificate of event participation. And to all who want to watch the live today, you may watch it here in our channel, Autodesk Community Philippines. And if you have further questions about today's event, you may, you may message us in meetup.com slash Autodesk Community Philippines. Thank you everyone for your time and keep learning. So, here we are in the glorious world of Autodesk. <laughs> As you can see, I'm just a 2D guy living in a 3D world. Whoa! Whoa! Not cool! Not cool! Not cool. You see, I'm filming here? Seriously. Where was I? As you can see, you can do just about anything with Autodesk applications. Why, just over there? The Revit boys are working on a lean building. And right here, inventors are designing a carbon exhaust for natural gas vehicle. AutoCAD troops are working on the electrical grid. Go it, Hodge! 
A 3D Studio Max team is making swarming nanobots. And the Maya guys, well, we don't know what that is yet. Artist. The point is, it can be a little intimidating getting the confidence and validation you need to prove to colleges and employers that you got what it takes to cut the mustard. Well, that, in a nutshell, is why Autodesk and Certiport created the Autodesk Certified User, ACU, and the Autodesk Certified Professional, ACP, The ACU is the ultimate prize to go for when you finish your Autodesk training course and have about 50 hours of experience under your belt. Getting the certification ensures your knowledge is growing, your skills are professionalizing, and demonstrates that you're developing the marketable 2D and 3D capabilities necessary for a career in your field. And if you like the sound of that, you're going to love the ACP. When you possess more advanced skills and can solve complex workflows and design challenges, then it's time to pursue recognition as a certified professional. That's right! Certification at this level proves you're ready for a career advancement. After you finish more Autodesk training courses and have about 400 hours of hands-on experience, then go for it! And in case you were wondering, for those of the highest levels of design, Autodesk offers the Autodesk Certified Specialist. <sighs> the view is incredible up here. But rest assured, whether you're preparing for college or joining the workforce, there's an Autodesk certification out there waiting for you. And it always, always separates you from the competition. One day you wake up and realize